I just may have unplugged myself. <laughs> Christ for the world we sing. The prelude today, um, I chose that because today is the 11th Sunday of Pentecost and it's singing of favorite hymns day. So there are no hymns listed in the bulletin. Uh, we'll do some singing of favorite hymns and you'll call those numbers out here in just a little bit. Uh, Nick is on vacation the next two weeks, so I'll be covering the keyboards here. Um, next week I'll do a little bit of a sermon and song somehow. Not quite sure how that's all going to turn out yet, but it's um, in the making. We send our love to all of those watching online with us this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're an open and affirming church. Folks from all walks of life, regardless of sexuality, race, or any other perceived differences are welcome here in our church and at our communion table. If you're visiting for the first time, we encourage you to fill out a visitor's card, drop it in the offering when the offering plates come by. This morning, Lori Hazeltine is our pulpit associate. The Miller family is our ushers. Flowers provided by Anne Bouchard. Fellowship is Rose and Wade Mayer. And um, today for Sunday School, uh, this is our last week of Sunday School for the summer, and Grace and Molly have done this all summer long to do Make a Joyful Noise for the kids. And so we appreciate that so much. Molly will maybe be with us a few more weeks, and then she heads off back to college, to University of Wisconsin in Madison. But Molly, we've really enjoyed you assisting us this, this summer and being with us, so thank you so much. A new list came out for our next refugee family, and there's been a lot of materials come in. I don't know what is still needed, but we'll kind of wrap that up soon and hopefully find out who our next family will be um, in the next couple weeks here. This Wednesday, Bible study at 10 o'clock, either in the pastor's office or you can join us on Zoom. Next Saturday morning from 9 to 12, we have a team all set in place to gather at Northern Illinois Food Bank to um, distribute food. And then um, we have a sign-up sheet now for the next um, several months coming up. So uh, the next time we would need a group of six or more would be uh, September 16th. So sign up out on the, uh, in the parish hall after church. And also, um, I, if you want to make a party out of it for something, I noticed the Miller family took the entire month of November. So they're, they're doing some sort of little celebration and lunch for that. So that's another route to go. And to invite other folks in who might want to, um, to assist in helping uh, feed those who need, uh, who need food. August 21st, Church Council. August 24th, over at the Dipners, our next Walk in Wine. And then coming up, and a big thing, is our shrimp boil, August 26th. So um, we have about 40 signed up right now. We'd like to see that number at least double. And um, we need a little help with something. In the storage area in Parish Hall, there are some boxes that were taken off the stage when the stage was cleared out to make some more room. Those need to get up to the attic, and then once those get up there, there are some shrimp boil boxes that need to come down. So if anybody could help with that, see myself or Lori afterwards here. The very next day, after we have the shrimp boil on the 26th, the very next day is the Dunham Woods Riding Club. There's a, the horse show tailgate, and we have um, a tent ready to go. Uh, thanks to um, the Bragg Thomas family and uh, Evangelism and Congregational Life are going to help us with that. But there's also a sign-up sheet in the parish hall for that. It should just be finger foods, little desserts, things that handle the heat well. We'll have soft drinks and um, waters there as well, but we'll have a ringside uh, a uh, ringside booth so that you can enjoy a horse show on August 27th. And not everybody gets to do that in their church. So I encourage everybody to pop in for a little bit over there. And it's a, it's a BYOB, so if you do want something other than water, soft drinks, um, bring that along for yourselves as well. Uh, rummage sale coming up in September, late in September. No drop-offs until after September 11th. 
and there will be no books, records, or CDs, or electronics of any kind. Um, other things, please contact Mary Roach ahead of time with that. Way out in the future, some other dates. We have a lot of announcements this morning. September 9th, we're hosting the Fox Valley Association of the Illinois Conference um, here at our church. It's our, our association is made up of about 41 churches and representatives from each church will gather here that day for their very first live meeting in five years. So um, we were asked to host and we're delighted and honored to do that. The very next day will be Rally Day. Way out in October on 15th, we're gonna host Crop Rock this year. So, um, so we'll be the, uh, the host for that as well. Are there any other announcements this morning? Good. <laughs> for our Centering for Worship today, I'm gonna use um, a devotional that came up this week for me. It's by uh, a pastor named Mary Luti, and the title of it is called Dropping In. And it really took me back a little bit, so I hope uh, it'll have a little nostalgia for you. It was based on one psalm verse, Psalm 17, verse three. And the psalmist wrote, if you try my heart, if you visit me by night, you will find no wickedness in me. Dropping in. I don't know if this is still a thing, but when I was growing up, people just dropped in. If they were in the area, they'd knock to see if you were home. Neighbors didn't even knock. There'd be footfalls on the porch, you hooing through the screen door, lots of chatter, maybe coffee, always laughs. My mother loved unexpected company. She was happy you came, even if you caught her in her ratty robe, screaming bloody murder at the kids or tossing dirty laundry down the stairs. Whoever stopped by, even at night, you got what you got. She didn't care. Our psalmist does. He keeps an immaculate house. No dust bunnies in the corners of his soul. No greasy pans in the sink of his heart. No ethical laundry in a fetid heap. He almost dares God to catch him in a ratty robe. Not a chance. Now there's much to be said for the impeccable life he plans to offer God if God should drop in. The Bible commands a certain moral seriousness after all, but it can be an odd and cheerless way to be in a relationship. Always running a white glove finger along the baseboards of your conscience, testing for dirt, proving yourself. You could hope instead, as my mother did, that the company matters more than the conditions. You could trust that if the visitor you who's through your door unannounced, it's for coffee, not moral inspection. A dropping in God will never find us without wickedness, but surely the joy of the encounter will cover a multitude of sins. So I invite you now to just close your eyes, take in a few deep breaths, ask God to drop into your life and your heart this morning. God, we are perfectly presentable, never will be, but we are glad you've come. Let us enjoy our time together. Amen. Please stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship. God moves among us. We welcome your presence, Lord, no matter on what means you are. Reach out your hand, and I shall always be with you. We reach for you, Jesus, and trust that you are present when we fear or hate. Your presence, O Lord, calms the seas as it calms our hearts. We may be rest assured that you are ever present with us, assuaging our worries as you love our anxieties in silence. So for our opening hymns here today, can I have um, three, and we'll do first verses of each. Anybody call out a number? Say it again. From Thelma 237. Four three nine. 
198. Okay. All right. Um, so stay standing. It's good to stand and sing. And I'll go to the organ. So the first one, find 237.
please join me in the, cry, uh, the prayer of invocation. God of so many names, you command us to come to you, yet we are doubtful of our abilities to make the journey. We are so uncertain of our steps, yet we long to have the faith in ourselves that you have in us. Be with us and embolden us through faith to rise as we are called to walk with you and walk alongside those who need companionship. Show us how to be children of God who can set skepticism down and take up the mantle of faithful presence. Please join me in the prayer for transformation and new life. God, our gentle parent, bring calm to the storms that batter us and blow us off course. We do not need to walk on water. We need only walk through our lives as whole and holy children who recognize that your love unites us, buoys us, and carries us forward to face miraculous challenges in a complex world. Help us to see through the clutter of daily existence in order to focus on what is most important, love, compassion, faith, and connection. Amen. Hear these words of grace. Even when we doubt, God is with us. God walks beside us, through us, with us, in all that we do. Miracles are among us if we see ourselves with God's loving gaze. May the peace of God be with you. We encourage you to place your hands over your heart as you greet those around you. If the children will come forward, the time of the children. Finley, do you want to come up? I don't want to embarrass you. Okay, that's okay. All right, how are you guys this morning? Good, good to see you all. So the first thing you're going to do is this is the second Sunday of the month. And so you are going to grab the buckets that Lori's, uh, that are right up here by Lori. And if you do a couple teams here, maybe, or if just two of you, you guys are older, you know, maybe you just each want to walk down. But um, we're going to gather, go ahead and get started. We're going to gather this morning. Um, this money's for the neighborhood food pantry. And if you're a guest visiting with us today, we do this the second Sunday of every month. And um, thank you for that. And every time um, we, when we gather uh, these funds, when we collect $650, we purchase a ton of food, I believe from the Illinois Food Bank, as a matter of fact, that goes to our neighborhood food pantry right down the street at Resurrection. And our little church, if you are visiting, uh, we are on our 26th ton of food right now that we purchase. So 26 tons of food is a lot of food. And um, we're really, really happy about that. So all of those pennies make a difference. And here we go. There we go. You can you can bring it up. So uh, that was a little bit unusual for starting to sing hymns today, wasn't it? Everybody calling out their favorite hymn number and that sort of thing. We used to do that a lot in the summer, where we ha we would just devote a certain amount of time in the service to do it. So it's nice uh, if you have a favorite song in church and you don't always get it uh, sung. This is one way to do it. 
most hymns have a story behind them. And at the end of the service today, at the postlude, I'm going to play an old gospel hymn called His Eye is on the Sparrow, and it has a story to it. You all know what a sparrow is, right? A little bird. So um, this song that I heard takes me back to when I was about your age. And I grew up in a place called Gary, Indiana. And so there was um, this wonderful, wonderful old gospel singer. Her name was Ethel Waters. And I got to hear Ethel Waters sing this um, particular song, His Eye is on the Sparrow, at a Billy Graham crusade, actually. So the story behind the song is this. It's based on a Bible verse from Matthew. And it says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. So these little birds, what that really means is these little birds that were oftentimes sold um, in, in pairs like this and just for a penny. So they didn't seem to have much value, but God cared for them. And they wouldn't, he wouldn't, um, they wouldn't fall from the sky without God knowing it. God really cares for us. So this is how that Bible verse fits into this. The woman who wrote the words to the song, His Eye is on the Sparrow, her name was Sevilla Martin, and her husband was William. And back in 1905, a long time ago, over 100 years ago, they were ministers, they were kind of a team, and they went all around the country to different churches, preaching and things. They would be guests. There was one couple that they always used to see in Elmira, New York, the Doolittles. Mrs. Doolittle hadn't gotten out of bed in 20 years because she was so sick, she couldn't move. And her husband was in a wheelchair. But people always came to visit them and they were always happy. And so one day, Sevilla Martin asked Mrs. Doolittle, where does this joy come from? And she quoted that Bible verse. If God's eye is on the sparrow, then I know he cares for me. And that's why she wrote the song. By raise of hand, how many of you are starting school tomorrow? It, so, so Connor, you start tomorrow. Sadly, yes. Sadly, yes. I'm with you on that. It seems a little soon. And then some of you start on Tuesday. I know where I live. Geneva starts on Wednesday. You're all going back to school. And music really can speak to us. And so one of the things that I want you to think about this year as you go into a new school year, anybody going to a new school this year? New building or anything? But that takes a little of the fear out of that, you know, for sure. But if you're switching schools, that can be a new thing too. But just remember that God is always watching over you and that God cares for you. And I hope through this whole school year that you can keep that in mind, that even God watches the little birds in the air, and if he does that, he really cares for us. So there's a song in the hymn book today. I'm gonna to pick the next one, and it's number 327. And so we're gonna sing that to you guys, and you can join along if you know it from Sunday school, and then, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer and you can be off to Sunday school. You wanna take a guess what it is? It might be a song you learned when you were really little. Yes, Jesus loves me, you got it, Aaron, good. That's a really important thing to remember. So, um, so let's sing this for these guys as they head off to their school year and surround them in some good thoughts and energy here. And here we go.
So I wish you guys a good start this week in school and hope everything goes well. And um, let's all say the Lord's Prayer together and then we'll let you guys go off with Grace and Molly today. All right? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, off you go. And so we'll continue in our um, time of prayer here. And I have a few things to announce and then um, ask if anybody else has any joys and concerns. We want to keep Maggie Purser's three children in our prayers um, on the loss of their father, Douglas Sands, who passed away. A joy. We've been, uh, Leon, we've been keeping you in our prayers, and here you are back with us today, and we're so glad to see you again. And thank you for that lovely note that you sent us this week as well. Continue to keep Ron and Maggie in our prayers. The kids were all over at the house the other day when I talked with them. We want to keep Ruth in our prayers. Again, if you weren't here last week, a joy, the community house received its approval from historic sites. And I think we want to keep um, in our prayers today, we definitely want to keep um, remembering all the folks in Maui particularly who are uh, lost their homes and family members and lives um, to those fires. Are there any other, are any other joys or concerns this morning? One over here, a couple over on this side. I have a quick joy. Um, our football team is celebrating our 10-year anniversary of winning the national championship. So the football team that Jamie, Kelsey, and I all played on, uh, we have a celebration this afternoon of a 10-year anniversary. Congratulations. Uh, good morning. I have a prayer of joy. My brother-in-law, Tommy, had a successful uh, second CAT scan for the cancer treatments he's going through. And I know that all of our prayers have contributed to that success in his spirit and my loving sister. So prayers continue for Tommy and Sarah. Anybody else? Jane in the back? Leah. Mark Twain told it before me, there were rumors that I died, but they were exag they exaggerated. <laughs> I'm back. And we're glad for that. I just want to thank everyone. This is a joy. The uh, mad walk that my family and I were on last weekend in Colorado was very successful. Team Sam was the number one fundraising team in friends and family and like number three in the nation. And yours truly was the number one walker of that weekend. So thank you all for your support. Thank you, Jane. I visited Ruth on Friday and they were having a uh, Western theme and she had on her cowboy hat and a red bandana and looked so darling. I have pictures on my phone. And um, also in the saloon that day, they had uh, communion. And she said to the minister, I'll bet you've never done this before. So <laughs> she, was, she was in good spirits and I, she thinks of all of us so much and misses being here. That's great. Anybody else? All right, let's pray. Good and gracious God, as a child, we mostly thought of you as a grantor of wishes. As an adult, we now understand that having a relationship with you is not about wishes. It is about faith and trust, hope and honesty. 
Help us to be honest with ourselves and with you. Let us be comfortable with unannounced drop-ins. You know our hearts and our deepest desires. Please answer our prayers according to your wishes, your will, so that your will may be done in us. Through your Son, Jesus, may we continue to grow as persons of faith and hope and love. And God, may our prayers always include the intentions and needs of others more than just ourselves. And so this morning we come to you holding Maggie's children and grandchildren in our hearts as they mourn the loss of their grandfather and father. We are so grateful for answered prayers to see Leon here today, to know that Tommy's scans are coming out um, with good news for him. Be with Ron and Maggie, continue to be with Ruth. Thank you for her joyful spirit. We pray for those in the island of Maui who have lost homes, jobs, families. We thank you for the joy of friendship, for organizations like football teams and other sports, music events that bring us together as comrades, and we celebrate the joy of those opportunities. God, we thank you for people coming together to speak up and organize organizations like MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, to lift their voices, to keep us alert. Be with all of them who have experienced loss and uphold them and surround them in your care. And God, finally today, we don't do this enough, but we pray for our enemies, those who may have harmed us personally, those whom we feel an enemy on a national level or international level. We know that we're all made by you, made in your image. Help us to get along. Help us to show that love is the way. We pray all this, O oh God, knowing you are hearing us far better than we are speaking. We pray this is a community of faith in all of the many and holy names of God. Amen. The scripture reading today is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, 
Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. For the word in scripture, for the word among us, and for the word within us, thanks Thanks be to God. God. The title of the sermon is Keep Moving Forward. Earlier this week, as Lori was typing today's bulletin, she told me the sermon title reminded her of the wonderful animated film Finding Nemo and Dory's cheerful phrase, just keep swimming. Maybe they are one and the same and perfect for today's gospel lesson. The story of Jesus walking on the water in the midst of the troubled sea can be found in three of the gospels. Mark, John, and today's reading from Matthew. But only Matthew tells the part about Peter walking on the water. The others are about a stormy sea and Jesus walking on the water and calming the sea. Peter walking on the water always makes me think of a wonderful movie from 1979 with Peter Sellers. It's called Being There. I watched it on Amazon Prime this week. Sellers plays the part of Chance, the gardener. Some hilarious and poignant turns of event take place in that movie. And a spoiler alert, at the very end of the movie, Chance, the gardener, walks on water. The Gospel lesson today also brought to mind the story about a young woman's appointment to serve as pastor of a small country church. This was the first time a woman had ever been appointed pastor to this church. And there was an older gentleman in the congregation who was a bit bothered by the fact that his new pastor was a woman, but even more bothered by the fact that she was not a fisherman. Because you see, he always took the pastor fishing. So, the young woman, the old gentleman, found themselves planning a fishing excursion. He wanted to keep the tradition going and she seeking to please her new parishioner. She tried her best to fake it, but it quickly became evident to the fisherman that the new pastor knew little about the sport. He had to help her bait the hook, show her how to cast a line, how to reel in the catch, and of course, how to take the fish off the hook. His fishing was interrupted by her inexperience. On top of it all, it was a chilly morning, and to add to his exasperation, she began to complain about the weather and regretted regretted that she left her jacket in the car. Well, I'll just pull up the anchor and take you back to shore to fetch your jacket, he said. Oh, no, that won't be necessary, she said. And with that, she stepped out of the boat and walked across the water to the shore to get her jacket. The fisherman shook his head in disbelief, in awe and amazement, and said to himself, scratching his head, well, I'll be damned. Wouldn't you know it? She can't swim either. (laughs) We all know Peter started out as a fisherman. He lived with his wife in Capernaum, where they shared a house with his mother-in-law, and his brother Andrew. He and Andrew had their own boat and were in a business with a couple of partners named James and John, Zebedee's sons. The first time Jesus laid eyes on Peter, he took one good look at him and said, so you're Simon, the son of John. I'm gonna call you Cephas, which is Aramaic for Peter, which is Greek for rock. And maybe that had something to do with Peter sinking in today's story as well. The story of Peter in the stormy sea comes directly after last week's story of Jesus feeding the 5,000, which you might remember started with Jesus going off to be by himself to take a break after he'd learned that John the Baptist had been murdered. 
This week starts at the end of that day. After a full day of teaching, healing, and feeding a crowd of 5,000, Jesus sends the disciples off in a boat, sends the crowds home, and once again, he goes up to the mountainside to pray by himself. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. In one chapter of Matthew, not one verse apart, two miracles side by side. The feeding of the 5,000 and walking on water and calming the sea. We're drawn to miracles because of their very essence speaks to a possibility, a hope that we sometimes find lacking in our lives. Some describe miracles as those rare instances where the human and divine intersect in dramatic fashion. We're dumbfounded when someone walks away unharmed from twisted metal of a horrific accident. We're left in awe when the image of Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus, appears unexpectedly on the stone wall of a cathedral. We call these miracles. At the same time, we also label as miracles thing that, things that happen around us every day, or I hope we do. Our hospital newborn infant nurseries are full of miracles, as is every single morning with the rising of the sun and the dawning of another day, if we choose to see it. We call these miracles, too, because we let ourselves experience a glimpse of the divine in these occurrences. We encounter the unfiltered and sometimes unexpected presence of God. I had it this morning driving over here. Uh, WFMT, the classical station, was on. And um, LaRob just started talking about the busyness of the fall approaching and that we needed to keep ourselves rested at all times and to keep that light going inside of us. And he played this wonderful rendition of this little light of mine as I drove down Army Trail Road. Symphony, opera singer singing, this little light of mine. A miracle. Peter stepped out of the boat. And we think less about those amazing seconds or minutes of him walking on water and more about how Jesus had to eventually save him from the swirling mess. What I find fascinating about Peter here, and so telling for the rest of us, is that the doubts and hesitancies and fears did not hit him until he was doing the very thing Jesus called him to do. He was in the middle of the miracle walking on water. Most people encounter the fear of jumping off a diving board when you're going up the ladder or looking down before you jump. Anxieties about the final exam hit us before the test day, not once we've turned it in. But here Peter gets in his own way, his own way of his miracle. He lets fear take over even as he is successfully doing the very thing he was afraid of. Our role in the miracles of Jesus is just as crucial today as it was in biblical times. We need miracles. We witness them, we participate in them. And despite our best efforts, intentional or otherwise, we so often undermine them. We fail to see them, and we fail to see our role in them. So I wonder this morning, Little Home Church by the Wayside, what can a little faith get us? I wonder what miracles this church has been part of in the past, here in Wayne for all of these years. Miracles we have um, been part of, miracles of whom we are becoming, the miracle of letting go of something so we can, with God's help and blessing, grab hold of something new. Look around and see the hungry that need food, and see the water that needs to be walked on. What can a little faith give us? 
If scripture tells us anything, it is that a little faith can get us a whole lot, more than we realize, because this God of ours is in the habit of doing amazing, miraculous things, not in spite of us, but with us. Never think you lack what is needed to help God do amazing things in this world. Never think you're nothing more than a spectator in the work of Christ, in the ministry of the church. Hold fast to the belief that miracles happen and trust that your role in them is as important as the faith you cling to on the stormy sea of your life at times with Jesus calling you to move forward. And maybe miracles take time as well. A close with these words from Long Walk to Freedom, the autobiography of Nelson Mandela. Mandela writes this, as a leader, one must sometimes take actions that are unpopular or whose results will not be known for years to come. There are victories whose glory lies only in the fact that they are known to those who win them. This is particularly true of prison, where one must find consolation in being true to one's ideals, even if no one else knows of it. I was now on the sidelines, but I also knew that I would not give up the fight. I was in a different and smaller arena, an arena for whom the only audience was ourselves and our oppressors. We regarded the struggle in prison as a microcosm of the struggle as a whole. We would fight inside as we had fought outside. The racism and repression were the same. I would simply have to fight on different terms. Prison and the authorities conspired to rob each man of his dignity. In and of itself, that assured that I would survive for any man or institution that tries to rob me of my dignity will lose because I will not part with my dignity at any price or under any pressure. I never seriously considered the possibility that I would not emerge from prison one day. I never thought that a life sentence truly meant life and that I would die behind bars. Perhaps I was denying this prospect because it was too unpleasant to contemplate. But I always knew that someday I would once again feel the grass under my feet and walk in the sunshine as a free man. I'm fundamentally an optimist. Whether that comes from nature or nurture, I can't say. Part of being optimistic is keeping one's head pointed toward the sun and keeping one's feet moving forward. Amen. This is the time in our worship service where we actively and intentionally take part in the support of the ministry of Christ. If you are a member of Little Home Church, we encourage you to continue your pledges and financial support. And if you are visiting with us today, we welcome your gifts as well. You may donate by cash, check, Venmo, PayPal. The QR codes for Venmo and PayPal are listed in the bulletin for your convenience. For those of you who may be watching this on YouTube later in the week, the information is in the online bulletin as well as at the end of the video. The gifts of faith come to us in many ways, and the miracles we witness are not always so obvious. May the manifestation of God's great abundance in our lives inspire us to generosity in as many ways as we see God's love unfurl. Please join me in the offertory prayer. Holy One, we thank you for revealing yourself to us in ways both big and small, in ways miraculous and mundane. Use our gifts to further your loving justice in our communities near and far. Amen. Good morning. 
You know, Lift Me Up is one of my favorite songs, and it's probably best known by being produced by Josh Groban. And his videos you know, that depict a spouse, a friend, or a significant other. But you know, there's somebody else that we probably should consider in those videos. Somebody that sits with you all every day in your pew. Somebody that's with you outside the walls of this wonderful church. And I hope someone that's in your heart. Raise me up so I can stand. 
Uh, go ahead and be seated for this. And let's have um, a couple more hymns here to close out. Call out a number. Over here, do it one more time. 292. 292. And then I heard one over here. 438. 438. I'll, uh, I'll do these from the piano. So 292 is first. So uh, as you leave here today, when you go into fellowship, remember the sign-ups for things like the shrimp oil, for um, the Northern Illinois Food Bank, and I'm forgetting one. Oh, the, the tailgate. Thank you. Jesus calls us to step out onto the water with him, to leave the safety of our boats, and to walk toward him in faith joining him in the work he is already doing in our world. When the wind and waves get high and threaten to overwhelm us, we remember his words. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I'm here. So let's go with faith and a few familiar songs in our hearts today to follow where Jesus leads, confident that his love and presence go with us wherever we dare to go. May the God in you, the divine image to which you are made, see the God in me and all of the saints that will cross our paths in the days that lie ahead. Amen.